Finally, let me address Mr. Xia Kenping's question on what activities are permitted or not in our AU's campuses. It would not be practical or wise to be overly prescriptive in specifying what should or should not be taught in each subject. And we have to leave room for AUs to exercise their good judgments. But certain principles should be made clear. First, all educational institutions must operate within the laws of Singapore. Our laws are enacted by parliament, which comprises members of parliament who are in turn elected by voters. These laws are the democratic expression of the will of the people. Our educational institutions must operate and exercise their academic freedom within those legal limits. This is a principle that the founding president of YNC and the current vice president of Yale University, Professor Pericles Lewis, publicly committed to in 2012. Clarifying YNC's policy regarding freedom of expression, he said, I quote, any college or university must obey the laws of the countries where it operates, unquote. Every country has their rules and laws, red lines, unique to themselves. For example, I do not think the US would tolerate an American university course designed by jihadists to promote violence. Or France or Germany would accept a course teaching that Nazism is good. These would fall foul of their laws. Second principle, our educational institutions must not deviate from their missions to advance education and maintain high academic standards. Exploring and debating issues within the context of academic study helps students develop important critical thinking skills. This should be underpinned by rigorous intellectual reasoning with students required to understand and interpret events and facts within a coherent intellectual framework. And at the same time, to examine theories against facts and empirical evidence and against competing theories or arguments. And this is especially important when studying complex and potentially controversial issues. Third principles. Our educational institutions should not be misused as a platform for partisan politics. <coughs> Professor, Rajiv, Professor Rajiv Patka, director of YNC's Humanities Division, put it very well. In an email to the college leadership, he wrote, and I quote him, to study is distinct from to practice. To study contemporary resistance or contemporary violence or contemporary prejudice is not the same as to practice resistance, violence, or prejudice. We have to ensure that in our educational institutions, academic studies does not get confused or compromised by causes of action and intervention which belong to the realm of individual choice." Unquote. In Singapore's democracy, there are many avenues for political parties and activists to champion their causes and for people to make their choices and exercise their political rights. Educational institutions, and especially the for formal curriculum, are not the platforms to do this. When elections are impending, AUs will always host panel discussions comprising representatives from various political parties and seek to present a balanced range of viewpoints. Otherwise, politicians of any political party, government or opposition, may not campaign, mobilize support or advance their party politics in any of our educational institutions. This has always been the position, always been. And when political office holders attend events, give speeches or conduct dialogues with students, they will do so only for the purpose of discussing national policies, not to mobilize partisan political support. Fourth principle, educational institutions must recognize Singapore's cultural and social context. Every society is a product of its history, culture, and unique circumstances which set the context of what is acceptable and how things are done. Singapore is no exception. Our governance approach is shaped by our unique realities. We are a small, multiracial, 
multi-religious country. Our margin of error is very small compared to bigger countries. Imagine if the demonstrations and riots on the streets of Hong Kong or the political confusion in the UK were to take place in Singapore. Our international reputation would be destroyed. Trust and confidence in Singapore, whether by Singaporeans or others, will be severely damaged. Our future will be in grave jeopardy. Singapore has been able to progress and develop, not least because we have maintained stability. We have built strong governing institutions, engendered respect for the rule of law, and engaged deeply with citizens. We have found solutions and struck compromises before the problems become so severe. Tripartism is an example. We did not wait for protests and strikes to break out before solving the problems downstream. But instead, government, employers and unions forged a compact amongst themselves, resolved problems and disputes upstream, and thus maintained industrial harmony. And this also made Singapore an attractive investment destination. We adopt the same approach in tackling many other challenge, challenges, be it housing, aging population, or climate change. Recognizing the challenges early, take a long-term view, find solutions, discuss, find compromises, and prevent problems from spiraling beyond control. We should strengthen this collective constructive approach and avoid falling into the divisions and dissensions that plague other societies.